Hello and welcome to Docker interview questions. In the last session that was part one, we have already seen some very basic questions on Docker. So in case you have not watched part one, you can go and watch part one first. And here we will start with the question, what are Docker images? So Docker images are templates which are used to create Docker containers. And we can also say container is a running instance of a Docker image. So if I go to my browser and search for Docker images, uh, let us look at this image. And here you can see Docker images are read only templates from which containers are launched. And each image consists of a series of layers. When you change an image, a new layer is created. So here, let us try to understand in real world, a developer will create something called as Docker file, which is a text file having instructions to create a Docker image. And when we build this file by the command Docker build, we get a Docker image. And this Docker image can further be used to create a Docker container by the command Docker run. So where are Docker images stored? So we can store our Docker images on our local system or can also store on any remote system like Docker Hub. If you go to your browser and search for Docker Hub, here is the Docker Hub website. If you go here, so here you can create an account on Docker Hub. And if you go to explore repositories, you will find all these images. So you can also search for some image here. For example, if I search for Jenkins, you can see this is the Jenkins image. And if you go to the details, so here you can use Docker pull Jenkins and to create a container out of Jenkins, you can use these commands. So let us go back and here are some of the basic commands for images. Let me show you, I am going to my terminal and if you are on windows and you have Docker installed, you can also go to your command prompt or PowerShell or on Linux, you can go to your command line. And if I say Docker images, it shows me all the images which are available on my system. And I can also say Docker pull and some image like Jenkins and it will pull it from Docker hub. So you can see it is using the default tag, which is latest and pulling it from Docker hub. So this will download the image. And once the download is complete, I will have the Jenkins image on my local system and I can use that image to create containers. So the pull is complete and I will clear the terminal and if I say Docker images now, I can see the Jenkins images here. So I can also create a container from the image by running the command Docker run. And then we have commands like Docker push as well to push the image to the repository. And we have commands like Docker inspect, Docker history and for removing Docker RMI. So I can remove the image by the command Docker RMI and I can give the ID of the image. So this will delete my image. And if I see now, I say Docker images, I will not find the Jenkins image. So these are the basic commands for Docker images and Docker images can be built automatically using instructions from a Docker file. We have already seen that and containers are the running instances of Docker images and we can use a single image to create multiple containers. So that was about Docker images. Let us go to what are Docker containers. So Docker containers, as we have seen, are the running instances of Docker image. So we have seen that in real world, a developer will package all its application and dependent libraries into a container and using Docker, we can, we can deploy it to multiple hosts or systems and we can ensure that the application will work fine on every system. So these are some of the commands for Docker container. So you can run the command Docker PS to check all the running containers. So as of now, there is no running container on my machine. You can give the command Docker PS minus a to see all the containers. So these are all the containers on my machine. And then we have command like run, start, pause, unpause. And we also have this command Docker attach, kill and RM. So let me show you an example. I will uh, run an Ubuntu Docker container and I'm using the flag minus it to run it in an interactive mode and I will just run this command. And you can see I already had a Ubuntu image on my local system. So it directly started the container. So if I say LS, I'm inside the container. 
and you can see this is from the Ubuntu system and then I can use all these commands like start, pause, unpause uh, so I'm going to a new tab of the terminal and here if I say docker ps you can see this container running and this is the id so I can say docker attach to this particular container and you can see now I'm inside my Ubuntu system or Ubuntu container and now I will exit from here and now I am on my local system and I can use other commands like kill remove to remove the container and in case you want to go more deeper I have a separate session where I have discussed about containers and all the commands you can watch that particular session to get a deeper knowledge on container so container isolates software from its surroundings so if an application is running on a container it is isolated from everything else it is independent and does not interfere with anything running on other container or anything running on the host operating system as well so if I go to the browser and search for docker containers and go to the images and let us go here so we have the host operating system where we have a docker engine and in the containers we have our applications running so some of the features of containers are they are very lightweight they require very less resources so unlike virtual machines they will consume only what is required for running an application and booting is very fast you can start stop kill remove container very easily and very quickly and they can also share operating system resources so that was all about docker containers let us learn what is a docker file so docker file is a text file with instructions to build a docker image if you go to the browser and I search for docker file and go to images and let us go here this particular image and here you can see docker file is a text file and when you run this file or build this file by the command docker build we get a docker image and if I search for docker file examples you can see this particular image so docker file can be as simple as we say from we start with from and give the base image name so this is the base image name and then we can run some command on this base image and then we can either copy our own libraries and when we will build this docker file we will get a docker image so the basic four steps are we create a file named docker file we add our instructions to this file and then we build this docker file by the command docker build and then we can run the image to create the container so docker build will create the image and docker run will create the container from the image if I want to show you an example I will go to a sample docker file that I had created so you can see this is a very simple docker file that I created let me enlarge this so yes so hash is used for comments and then we start with from and the base image name you can also say scratch if you want to start with an empty image but I will I will say Ubuntu and then you can give a maintainer which is optional then you can give some run commands and some CMD commands so here I am saying hello world from my first docker image and to build image from this docker file what I will do is I will go to the location of this file so this is on my desktop so I am already on this docker files folder and I will say docker build and I have to give the location of this file but I am already on the same folder so I will say dot and I will run this so you can see it is running step 1 from Ubuntu then 2, 3, 4 and so on it successfully built the image and the image id is this so if I go and search for docker images you can see my image is built here so this is the id and if I want to create a container from this image I will say docker run and the id of the image and you can see the container is created and it is saying hello world from my first docker image this is what was given here in the docker file hello world from my first docker image now of course if you want to go into more details I have a session on docker file you can watch that session as well so these are the four basic steps to create and run docker file and we have already seen 
we built a docker file to create a docker image and we run a docker image to create a docker container let us see what is docker compose so docker compose is a tool for defining and running multi container docker applications so in real world we do not have a single container application take an example of a web application we will have a container running the front end server we will have a container running the back end server or the databases and some other dependencies so with docker compose we can create multi container docker applications docker compose uses yaml file which is docker hyphen compose.yaml for configuration and we can start all the services by using docker compose up command we can stop all the services by using docker compose down command and we can also scale the selected services and this will be very useful when we create applications with microservices architecture with docker so if i go to my browser and search for docker compose file and go to images you can see the docker compose file looks like this you can see this is a very basic file where we are having two services web and database for database we are using the mysql image and these are the ports which are exposed and some environment variables and for the web we are using the nginx image so if you go to your docker hub and you go to repositories you can see there is an nginx image which is used for the front end of a web application and for database we have a one of the option is mysql image so that is what is being used here and there are five simple steps for working with docker compose we install docker compose we create docker compose file which is docker hyphen compose.yml the standard file name and we can check the syntax and validity of the file by running the command docker compose config and then we run the docker compose file by the command docker compose up and it will create our services and to bring the services down we have docker compose down and of course i have a session a separate session explaining everything about docker compose so you can watch that as well and that was all about docker compose now i hope all this was very useful and helpful for you thank you for watching